Lou, we said last week we may never do one of these after another win. And, and it's starting to get to that level, huh? That's looking like your best take of the season. Yep. Sadly enough, that's probably my best take right now. I'm not real proud of it, but hey, that's where we're at. That's your best take. We don't have to go into the worst take because we're going to have true or false here. It's mm-hmm. a good episode. I really like how we structured this. We have a lot of points. It's going to be true or false. Yep. But before we get there, if you were to adjust your live... Steelers over under wins. Where do you have? Okay, us? I still think we're okay with the seven being the. Okay, standard. that that's interesting. I'm I sweating still, that bet. Oh, I still think we're okay there. Okay, twelve and five is gonna be a tad bit of reach. But you think we got eight in us? I did. I think you can push the bet. All right. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Some early optimism on a, on a dark Monday. It's dark. It's dark. All right, Lou. True or false? <laughs> I have a lot of statements here for all you. Right. It's gonna be all things about the game. Let's go. Okay, true or false, this was the most embarrassing regular season loss you've ever seen. Okay. You've ever seen. Let me preface this. There is a lot of potential that Lou might go full Yinzer mode today. Like, I am mad. I've been mad about the Steelers for a while. Sad, sure. I'm mad. There's a lot of blame to go around, and I'm not happy, and I might just send it all today. Okay? Send it, Lou. Okay. That has to be hands down the worst loss that I've ever seen in my life. A close second being the Browns wild card game two years ago. That was my next true or false. We'll get to that one. But yes. I have some other nominees for you. But those things are still the same. So let me let me say this. The reason that this was the most embarrassing game that I have ever watched as a Steelers was how the game went and how it was structured and the lack of emotion and the lack of desire, similar to that Browns game. They had no passion. They had nothing going on there. It, I don't even know where to start. I don't know where to begin with this. It was bad from top to bottom. From the only, the only good. Well, it was play, bad from the kickoff. The only good play they made the whole time was the was the kickoff, the first kickoff where the guy fumbled it. We got him down to one, but then that responded with the ninety eight yard touchdown. <laughs> How about Steven Sims having an eye injury pregame? Pregame, he had an eye injury pregame. You can't have a worse start than that. I... How does Danny Smith have Pierre as the backup? He's yeah, a defensive like, player. Like there's nothing wrong. Like Boykin. I mean, nothing wrong with – I put Deontay back there. What, what's the difference at this point? No, we've, we've had running backs do it a oh, lot yeah. in the past. Yeah, I don't see why James Pierre was – Okay, um, another nominee, though, for that one was the Bengals game last year, the second Bengals game. Yeah, 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 that, that was bad. But I mean, there's some recency bias. It always feels worse in the moment, but that Bengals game hurt. But the way this was in, – in, I don't know if it was because maybe it was Kenny's debut – that maybe there was a shot of something to be better. And he didn't look bad, and, and we'll get into that. But I feel like there was so much, okay, we could turn the season around if we, not necessarily win, but if we have a good showing. Yes. There was no good showing. there. Nothing. We just had to, like, can't come, score a touchdown. We come close score to covering that 14, just, you know, like, put up a good effort. That's all I was really looking for. You know, there Did was... I have some money line bets? Yes, I did. But, like, <laughs> you know, I wasn't expecting to win those. There was a time in the second quarter where I almost felt like if we keep hanging around, we kind of got a shot here. And then it, that kind of went by the wayside. But there was a point in time where the Steelers were, like, hanging around. Well, because the, the block field goal was great. Right. And then our first drive was really strong. Right. And then we went three and all out, the, like, four times in a row. The, wheel, the wheels fell off. Yep. All right. True or false, Lou? This was the worst loss you've seen since the Cleveland playoff game. Because that was a home game, and Bouncy snapped it 20 yards over Ben's That's head in the, the first started. play. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah. I think this is worse than the Cincinnati game. Okay, so that would be true. Yeah, that's true because, like I said, it was Kenny's type of thing. Kenny's premier as a starter. And Cincinnati was on a roll last year. Not that Buffalo wasn't, but, like, Buffalo had to show signs they can be beatable. That Cleveland game was different. It was different. It hit different. It was a home playoff. That game. was twenty eight nothing in the first like quarter, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure in the first it was at least twenty one in the first quarter, for sure. I like in the was, first like three minutes. It got to twenty eight though. That yeah, was so bad. It was bad. Ugly. Um, okay. Speaking of Kenny, Kenny showed improvement despite only scoring three points. Hundred percent true. Hard to do. Well, I, I wouldn't even say did Ke- I wouldn't even phrase it like that. Showed improvement, but did it's the, like showed promise. Did the offense show improvement? Absolutely. I think so. Because of the fact that I'm going to get the, the total yards, well, the running game, but Kenny threw for over 300 yards, okay? And they did drive the ball. 
They got to the red zone four times. Now, they got three points out of it, but they did get there. We couldn't even get to the red zone with Mitch. Let's just be honest with the whole situation. Well, also, you have to preface it by saying Buffalo has one of the best Ds in the NFL. Correct. Okay. And, but in the second half, when Kenny's throwing the ball every single play, those are the Bills' backups. Yeah, and they are going to get yards. And I, and I get someone that says, well, the reason he got so many yards is because they're playing catch-up and they're playing prevent. I get that. I understand that. But in the first half, they were moving the ball. Kenny was getting first downs. He was making great. He made a lot of really good throws. A lot of timing routes. A lot of balls that were there. His first, the interception to Deontay, he, Kenny evades the pocket, gets out, makes the throw. It was a little high, oh, but God. it was in Deontay's hands. We'll get to Deontay. Yep. My God, dude. But, yeah, no, absolutely true on that. The offense showed a, showed an improvement for sure, and that means Kenny did. Okay, let's get to Tomlin. True or false? Tom, this is true or false? Tomlin went up and hugged ha- Hamlin after the game. Post cheap shot on Kenny. Oh, did he? I didn't even see that. That's true. Oh, that is that I true? I tweeted a photo of it. Mm. Yeah, it makes sense. Frank M. Smith underscore on Twitter. That's a, wow. I had a, a tweet plug. storm loop. You were you were on fire on Twitter. You I had you show. Fire. You're like Josh Allen. You're like Josh. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. He was tweeting up a storm. Um, let's talk about Tomlin. Let's talk about. Tomlin. Wait, let's talk about the cheap shot first. Okay, yeah. Okay. Not penalized. Did you think it was a cheap shot? Well, on Hamlin's hit on Kenny. Yeah, when he on slid. The slide. Absolutely, yeah. that should be the flag. Now that's what the NFL is trying to prevent, right? The quarterback getting hurt. Kenny did what he did. He slid. And he comes in, that was a cheap shot. Now, the problem in the NFL is now this. Two things. A, you don't flag that. And in response to that, you don't flag that. James Daniels comes out and throws the guy, and that's what should happen. I have no problem with him doing that. But then James Daniels gets the flag. Just all around this week in the NFL. Yeah. Poor performance from the refs. Did you see Brady's? Yeah, really bad. Unbelievable. And he came out and said it, too. Did he really? He came out and said, I watched the play like 10 times. There's no way that's roughing the passer. He came out and said it. Yeah. Why can't you just challenge that? Why is the NFL restricting challenges? Now, I don't want the NFL doing the PI thing that they were doing for a couple years where they go and automatically review the PI. That's bad. But if you have the challenge flag, you should be able to throw it for anything. I think you should be able to – I don't think you should have more challenges. The same two, and if you get two, you win. You should be able to challenge anything on any play. I'm with you. Why? There's no reason why you shouldn't. Yeah. We have the technology. We have everything. Uh, I mean, a 15 You can't yard, even argue that it slows the game down because you have the challenges anyway. A 15-yard penalty is oftentimes a bigger play than, like, the spot of the ball, which you can challenge. I or... would much rather challenge a, like you said, like a third and 15. Third and 15. It's third and 15. I'd rather challenge the personal foul or the illegal contact or whatever rather than it's on the one-inch line and I'm going to challenge it, but I can get it on the next play. I'm really not a big instant replay guy, but if it's not going to slow the game down, if we're not adding challenges here, yeah, then why not? Yeah, you have the same amount. You have yeah. the same amount. Yeah, that, no, that's, that's, that's the right way to do it. Okay, Luke, true or false? Somewhere in Swickley, Big Ben is sitting in his basement, sniffing beers with uh, Lance? Lance, yeah, him and Lance. And he's smiling on the inside about how bad this team is without him. I hate to say true. I think it's true. It's true, but, okay, it, it's true. And we all realize here's the, but here's the thing that I think Steeler fans actually really need to understand. The Steelers hit the jackpot with Ben Roethlisberger when they did. And here's why. The NFL is structured to be a competitive league. And you're only supposed to win for so many years. You have to pay your players, then you get over, under the cap and all that stuff. Okay. Because of Ben, the Steelers haven't had to rebuild yet. And they haven't had great teams, but Ben has kept them competitive. You want to talk about not, Tomlin not having a losing season? A lot of that had to do because he had Ben. Wait, can we pause on the Tomlin losing season thing? Why do we all give so much credit to Tomlin not having a losing season? In a lot of those years, he didn't make the playoffs. Like, four of those years were like, oh, he, he didn't have a losing season. Well, we didn't make the playoffs. I don't think we do as Steeler fans. I think that's a national narrative. He, like, because who, that's a who, big deal, though, for national. Who cares if you have a winning season and you don't make the playoffs? Like, what are we giving Tomlin that credit for? Because the, I think that's a national narrative. And, that, and people have to realize, in, in Steelers country here, we mediocre is not acceptable. And not having a losing season is great. But we've won three playoff games since, what, 2014, 11? It's really bad. I went through – I was in a dark place yesterday, Lou. I went through all the years. You were. I was in real dark place. Of our playoff exits, because everyone was like, still like, oh, like, we'll get to the Canada stuff later. But like, could we, could we just like, be a little critical of Tomlin? Well, the, well, the worst 
And the worst loss of that being was Blake Bortles putting up 45 points at home. I agree. That's the worst one. Or the Tebow one. Or the Tebow one was that. Yeah, okay. So let, let's talk about Tomlin, Frank, because I think that needs to be discussed. Okay. How – I'm trying to think of how, how I want to take this route. Is Tomlin a good coach? I'm, I've still never understood what his skill set is. I get that he exudes leadership and that players like to play for him. And I think that's where it starts and finishes. But my problem with Tomlin is he's outcoached on game day, clearly outcoached on game day. His assistant coaches, his coordinators, are these guys that they just promote from up in the system that were linebackers coach or quarterbacks coach that don't have the to do all with being able to compete at that level from a coaching perspective. I mean, even Colbert, just a North Sider. Well, yeah, well, yeah, well, see that well, that's the other problem now. The Steelers are where they're at right now because they've drafted poorly, and there's no doubt about okay, that. Okay, well, that's one of my true or false. So let's just do this one. Colbert yeah. was always overrated. Um, I would say because his drafts aren't looking good right now. I would say true, but base okay. And there's a lot that you can go back on too. We can save that for next episode. He's I had a full list. He, you could say that his cap was great, and that was because Omar Khan did the cap, who's the GM now. So, yeah, these drafts are now. He drafted some really ridiculously great players. Colbert drafted Troy. Colbert drafted Ben. I mean, you know what I mean? He, he has the hits, but he has a lot of misses. Yeah, he has, a, he has more misses than he does hits. And the problem is, like I said, the reason that we're at right now, if you look at the past 10 years, okay, you cannot miss in the first, second, or third round. You can't miss. I'm not saying the guy's a Hall of Famer, but you can't miss. And there has been plenty of players that have been missed in the, in the last 10 years in the first three rounds. Specifically in the secondary. That was another tweet I had was like, hey, right now, how nice would it be if we had, like, Artie Burns not as a bust. Right, yeah. Artie Burns, you had, you know, Justin Lane. That's a third-round pick. Um, At a certain point, like, you know, you're not always going to get a guy like Joe Hayden who just wants to come to the city. Sure. You're going to have to draft somebody. Yeah. And it showed. You know, it shows. And it showed right away because on the first drive, Gabe Davis just takes the top off. And Does it just it, doesn't run an awesome route just faster. See, and that's what's interesting, though, especially when you're talking about the secondary. The St- Tomlin's always saying his next man up, next man up. Okay, but we don't have next man up because we have a depth problem. Take a look at Buffalo, by the way. Buffalo was hurt. They were hurt in the secondary, very hurt in the secondary. And as the game went along, their backups were taken out of the game. So now their third strings are in. We didn't score a touchdown. Their, their one guy had four uh, block passes. I mean, it's just insane. It the, is- the Steelers have no depth. They really don't. I mean, there's a lot of injuries. Like it, most of most of them are on defense. I know Fryermuth went out, but look, like but let, the, let's let's go back. Let, let's go back to Tomlin for a second. Before everyone praises Tomlin because he you know never has a losing season, whatever. He's horrible at managing the clock. We take a ton of dumb penalties, mm-hmm. and we can't seem to scheme people open. No, it's it's like those are three things I really need. Or scheme people to. Or scheme and we people just to make, defend the open. And we just make dumb mistakes. Like, why is Danny Smith still the coach? Like, th- th- he has to be the worst special teams coach in the league. Every week, we make an awful special teams error. Every single week so mm-hmm. far. I think we're five for five. Mm-hmm. I, well, there's that. There's like, and, and you want to talk about we can't scheme to get someone open. We can't scheme to get someone to cover. Like, we Both talked ways. about with the, those games. We t- we've, and and we've he's a defensive that. guy. It, it, so what, so what, where does it come down to then? What has to happen for Rooney to step down and say, hey, Mike, you know what? You did a great job, but we have to go in a different direction. Your message isn't getting through anymore. Well, I've always thought this, too. So, like, the best coaches make $10 million. That's what Belichick makes. Sure. Okay. That's half of what Deontay makes or, you know, two-thirds of what Deontay makes. Isn't your coach really, really important? ESPN uh, had a I, segment— I mean- I ESPN mean, had a segment. I swear to God, they had this segment. You know, they're like bored, nothing to do. Like they do so many shows. I get why they have to do stuff like this, but they go on there and they had this during Patrick Mahomes' awesome season where he won the MVP. Yeah. Who would you rather have, Mahomes or Belichick? No, I'd rather have Mahomes. But the fact that you would even ask that question shows you how important a coach is. So there's no salary cap hit on your coach. Your team is valued at three billion dollars. Spend the money and get the coach you want. 
You know, we act like we can't go out and hire a guy like Lincoln Riley. Pay him fifteen million. Pay him twenty million. Your team's worth three. Bill, dude. And, like, who, and who wouldn't want to come to the Steelers? Seriously, I never understand why teams are cheap on coaches like that. I just but don't I don't get understand it. what has to happen. Now I understand again, like the national narrative is that if they let go of Tomlin, someone will will pick him up in in an instant. But what does he do? What is he done? The team has underperformed for ten years. That's a fact. And I don't see it. What what is is are the Rooneys afraid of a change because that's not how it's done here? Yes. That's a problem. And I agree. Let's move on. True or false? Now I'm all worked up. <laughs> True or false? The defense was actually worse than the offense, and we scored three points. That's that's saying something. That's true. It's true. It's true. Now, don't get me wrong. Buffalo has a great offense. Uh, Josh Allen's a fantastic quarterback. Um, but you're the top paid. You're, you're the top paid defense in the league. All right, so we're the top paid defense in the league. That's true, but half the guys aren't playing. TJ's not playing. TJ's not playing. Ogan Joby went out. Um, Levi Wallace, I think Sutton. Yeah, Mink was I, Mink was injured. I get that, but they were injured too. So like, in the NFL, injuries are part of the game. So KZ. Goes, okay, but that goes back to my point though. Injuries are part of the game, and replacing TJ Watt is is something you cannot do. But these other teams have injury problems, and their backups. Yeah. It's not an excuse. Are their backups are better than our starters? Yeah, sadly enough, it, that pains me. That pains me to say the defense was worse. Didn't think we'd be here, Lou. No, one in four. The defense no. being worse than the offense. No, I mean, it wasn't I that long ago. In years. It wasn't that long ago we were saying this team will go as far as the defense will take them. That defense can take them very far. I was so it feels right like week a year one. Ago. I was so right week one. What happened? <laughs> I'm like so upset. <laughs> okay, true or false? Matt Canada still has his job after the bye week. So uh, I was thinking that's the only time. Uh, I'm trying to think how to answer that. Um, does he have his job? No, he doesn't. False. And that's the only time you can do it because even you can't institute a different offense. You can institute a different play caller, but you probably need two weeks to get that in. You can't do anything in a week. You think they're going to make the move? So, something has to be done. I mean, Tomlin has to make a statement. Putting Pickett in for Trubisky, for Trubisky wasn't the statement. There has to be a he has to he has pressure now, man. Those he kids, has a lot of Mike has a lot of pressure. He needs to make somebody somebody's head has to spin here. It has to happen. Can and, you imagine the booze next week? Oh. They boot. They put on, um, if Brady comes in next week and slaughters the Steelers at why home, can't he? Oh, he he looks like he will. But why can't he? How what's that spread going to be? Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. What is it? I heard you, that you, this is no no no. I know what the spread is. Okay, I have to check on this. But I heard this is the highest dog spread at home at home in a long time. I have to check on that. But I let me once guess. I, it. Once I tell you the number, you, you, you're, it probably is. First of all, we're very rarely dogs at home. Rarely, is is fourteen like, fourteen yeah. and a half? No, 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 no. Not that's no. Okay, you said it. All right, so you made it, me think it was really high. What, it, it, is this it, is, 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 it, is, is it's ten, seven and a half. That's still very high. Right, right now. I've never seen the Steelers over a touchdown dog at home. Never in my life. <laughs> I think it should be higher. I mean, why? <laughs> tell me why. What, tell me what you have seen. On, I can't believe on it's not Phil. 10. We just lost by 35. Frank, did it, did it, did it break? Frank's going to bet Tampa Bay, breaking news. Frank, <laughs> uh, it I, should be 10. I, I would never do that. I um, would never, but seven and a half. All right, true or false, Lou? By the way, I, I think Canada's going to keep his job. You think through the whole year? Because why? Why? Because, because him getting fired in the middle of the year makes Tomlin – Says he made a mistake then? Is that is that I don't think Tomlin feels the pressure. What does have to happen for him to feel pressure? What has to happen? I there's a lot of people that say Tomlin's gonna have this job till he wants to leave. That's my point. That's the problem. So he doesn't feel the pressure. We talked about the only thing Mike does good is that he is a leader. Like, uh, th that's what he does. He gets everyone together. And, and I can live with that as a head coach, but he, you need assistance. Okay, that didn't work. 
But his message is falling on deaf ears. Don't you agree on that? Lou, I think they should make the move. I'm saying I, this is what I think is going to happen. Like, you know who's sitting that doesn't have a job right now? Is my man, from, um, Sean Payton. He's doing uh, media. Taking a break. <laughs> Let's get Bill Cowher back. <laughs> Dude, this place would go nuts. Car power! This place would go nuts. Bull- from McDonald, PA! <laughs> Come back. Oh, the, you want to talk about Yinzer Explosion. <laughs> Holy shit. You bring Cowher back? <laughs> They'll paint a mural. They'll, uh, that would actually be legendary. Oh, my God. That'd be the biggest Yenzer thing ever. Uh, okay, ready? Go. True or false, you were tired of hearing Tomlin's motivational phrases because there's a lot of them. I'm real tired of hearing the standards of standard. I'm real tired of hearing next man up. I'm real tired of hearing his stupid, stupid stuff that I that he says in the press conference that I can't even understand. I'm I'm done with it. How about this one? The, his big one going into this game was, this isn't a game for blinkers. Better not blink. Well, Wait. the opening kickoff. You never even opened your eyes, Mike. <laughs> we fumbled the opening kickoff. Auto blink. You know, you didn't even open your eyes. Like, what are you talking about, man? Just completely ill prepared. They're, 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 that's the problem, man. They're a. They're not prepared. They come out of every single game for the past four. When was the last time we scored a fourth first quarter touchdown? Like fourteen games ago, they come out flat every game. They're, they're not prepared to play. He doesn't have them prepared to play. This loss is on Tomlin. This embarrassing loss is on Mike Tomlin, and you can't tell me different. You can't. No, I I think you're right. Because everything stinks. I I think Canada sucks too, but people have to give more blame to Mike Tomlin. They have to. You can't. When the offense sucks and the defense is good, hey, the offense needs to get better. Defense did good. When you both suck, there's a problem. And special teams. All three phases of the game sucked. And we made a lot of dumb plays. We like but here's we the took thing. dumb penalties. You it's... are the head coach. It's the same way as the quarterback. You get the accolades, but you get all the blame too. That's how life works. I'm sorry if it's unfair. How about Tomlin after the game going like this? And we'll have some quotes later. This isn't one of them. Uh yeah, we got smashed. And the guys the guy asked him a question. He goes, What are we talking about here, guys? We got smashed. That's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, we're talking about you not being prepared. Your 53-man roster not being prepared to play. Yeah, we're, That's what we're, I'm talking we're about. talking about you getting smashed, Mike. So what do, what happened? Right. He, he wouldn't answer it. Well, let's, let's, so to that point, if we want to talk about smashed, okay, your 53-man roster not being ready. You have someone, and we talk about this is our guy, but I'm just going to make this point here. Like Mark Robinson who's sitting on the sideline, not getting a hat every game. Yet, you dress week in and week out. Robert Spillane, who had zero tackles and zero assists the entire game. And Devin Bush, who had three assists, no solo tackles. They combined for three assists. What is going on? Bush on the sideline, clean jersey. Clean. Clean. He's got his afro out, clean jersey. And when he did try to make a tackle, he got popped. He is so soft. He wants no part of the football. Just does not like contact. And you know what's it's sad, every though? Game. He's so stupid. He thinks he's going to get paid as a free agent. He thinks he doesn't get paid. That's how stupid Devin Bush is. Who would pay him? I have no idea why you would want him as a player on your team. He's, and he, 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 he's so unmotivated to play football. Um, you can I've see had, it. I've had. I, yeah, I can All right, Lou. True or false? And this yeah. is a confusing one because I'm not even sure what this means. Good. The standard is the standard. I've never really understood this. I, I think it's like there has to be some fancy word for what kind of statement that is. Like, Yeah, no, I don't understand what you're saying. Um, okay, here's the thing. Tomlin uses all these stupid catchphrases. Sure, but like what does that mean? The standard is the standard. Well, see, all these well, – well, as we call them here, Tomlinisms. All these Tomlinisms have come from the team that – he inherited from Cower. Okay, let's just call a spade a spade. I'm not saying Cower's team won the Super Bowl. I ain't going that far. But I mean, 80% of the players in that team were, were he, drafted under, were under Cower's regime. Yeah. But the standard being the standard had everything to do with how well that defense was when when Tomlin came here. That's the standard. 
what Tomlin did in this first three years, that was the standard of Pittsburgh football that this city deserved and this city was used to. But he keeps using it, and this is his team. His fingerprints are all over this roster. He deserves 95% of the blame. I still don't understand what the stand. If the standard is the 2008 Steelers, then just say that. What? Right. He wants to make this cute shit. That it just doesn't even make sense anymore. Okay. Um, true. Do, fall- do, do you think I'm having a little aggression with Tomlin today? Like, we're not getting along today. Dude, there's still a lot of Steeler fans that are going to defend him. I'm telling you, people are going to be... Heavy- but I don't understand how you can. If you really watch watch it, and if you've watched this season, they are talented. They are. They're off... Name me an offense that has three receivers and in, 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 in running backs like this. I mean, it's just... Okay, true or false? You thought about turning the game off. You want me to tell you a true story? I'll tell you a true story. Okay, tell me. I left after the third quarter to go to my buddy's house to watch Red Zone. That's a true, that's truth. I listened to the game on the radio in the car on the way there, and I went to watch the Red Zone at my buddy's house. It was a JV game by the fourth quarter. Yeah, it was stupid. It was stupid. I was, I've very rarely ever, like, been like, I'm not watching this till the last, till it hits triple zero. Okay, quick true or false? There were players in the field for the Steelers you didn't know were on the team. Number 16? Josh Jackson. Josh Jackson. Who, first of all, know. didn't know you could wear 16. Oh, no, you can, you can, you're allowed to wear any number now. Now you can wear any number. Didn't know you could. I thought you could only wear single digits. So I was like, 16? Like, who are we? Do we have, like, a backup quarterback out there? Who is a receiver? Who is 16? Yeah. Josh Jackson. Never heard of him. Never heard of him. There was another one I never heard of. Um, I mean, it was so bad that they were thrown to Derek Watt. That was our opening play. Our first. <laughs> like, I'm falling. Shit's falling. I'm, the water's everywhere. It's, they, have, they have me so wound up right now. Yeah, that was. Wait, they, you script. You script the first 15 odd plays, as they say in the That NFL. was Canada's brilliant. That was first your play. opening play? <laughs> to throw the Derek White. Oh, oh, oh. And I love the play action idea. I love that. He's a rookie quarterback. He's going to hand it off. I love that. No, Derek wanting the flat for a yard. At least he caught the ball. I mean, what? <laughs> All right. I don't know if I'm going to make sure it to this podcast alive. Yeah, you, your water is gone. I, I, I have a, a <laughs> heart palpitations here. True or false? Josh Allen threw for 350 plus and four TDs in the first half. True. No, it's false. He only threw for 348. Only 348. Mm, he's being sneaky now. <laughs> this one's being sneaky now. Um, Look at that stat line. That That's insane. Well, a 98-yard touchdown it will do that to a stat line, but that's... Well, that falls on the money. Well, Yeah, but that's inconceivable that that could happen. Apparently not. I don't even know. Well, he, I don't even know. He looks sick. Like He's very good, though. He's let's, so good. Let's not get... In, he dude, his ball, his second ball he threw to Cave Davis for a touchdown. Mm-hmm. That looked like it was shot out of a cannon. That yeah. thing was so high. He threw that so far, and, beat, and, and it he, was perfect. And he beat Minka. Minka almost wiped that though. If Minka's fully healthy, I think he gets it. But but that, that I mean, Josh season. Allen's awesome. Um, interesting note about Josh Allen. Not one college recruited him. Not one. He sent his highlight tape in a letter. To all these colleges, and only one college responded. Yeah, Wyoming. Wyoming. He was a JUCO guy. And this, and this guy could be top two by the end of the year, if not already oh, there. Yeah, I mean, we, I, everyone called him, like, in that legendary game versus Mahomes. Like, everyone thought he outplayed Mahomes. Uh, speaking of that rematch next week. <sighs> Why am I plugging CBS now? I don't know. I don't, that's game, game of the year next week. <laughs> we'll watch some real football. Yeah, they, oh, they had me so before. <laughs> okay, all right. True or false, we need a top cornerback more than we need a top offensive tackle. See, that's interesting. I was listening to a couple things today. Let's say the Steelers, first of all, I would never in a million years after week five think we'd be sitting here saying that the Steelers have the number one overall pick in the draft right now. God. But I've never do. said that in my life. But we do. Let's say the Steelers land in the top five for draft. What position do you draft? 
I don't know what's going to be on the board, but like you no, no, saying, no, like, don't say everything's available. Okay, everything's available. The top guy at the top position is available for you. One, I want to sit cornerback. Okay, you want like a Sauce Gardner? Yeah, I want like Revis. Okay, yeah, but I'm saying like that's that's what I want. Certain, yeah. That's what that's where you would go. Yeah. Okay. Someone brought up an interesting point that was listening to the fan. Did would you draft a quarterback? No. Okay. This is a quarterback heavy draft. Would you then use that value in that pick to trade down, or are we too desperate for a need right now? Uh, yeah. If a team's hungry enough, like I don't think there's a, and I'll get to this later because I have a true or false that goes into this. I don't think that there's a massive difference. Like it's not the NBA. You don't need the number one overall pick. The difference between the number one overall pick and the number like seven overall pick is not that big. Unless it's like a legendary guy, like um, yeah. you know Andrew Luck, Trevor Lawrence, these types of prospects. But usually, like anywhere in the top ten is great. Oh, oh, you're saying like in the NBA, like a top five is NBA. Like, like if you're the top three is way way different than like four through ten. Well, okay, yeah, because yeah. But do you take a? You said corner over a lineman, and I actually agree with that. Would you take a stud D end? Like, would you take, like, a Miles Garrett? I mean, we right. could use everything at this point, Lou. That's what I mean. <laughs> That's what I mean. But I want the corner. Okay. Yeah, I, I've I've had enough of watching, you know, actually, Levo also wasn't that bad, and, like, Cam Sutton's not that bad, but, like, they're not ones. You want, you want a shutdown? Yeah. You want a shutdown guy. Okay. I wouldn't go corner. I, you know what's so sad, Frank? You know what's so sad? You wanted a corner. That's a defensive player. I'm thinking the same thing. I think we need either a middle linebacker or a DN. That's on middle, middle linebacker would be my second one. And the, usually and those guys don't we're go. We're still drafting defense. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Uh, Lou, I should have had this one earlier. I really like this one. Should have been when we were talking about Tomlin in Canada. But true or false, do you think a, like a little part of Tomlin considered just like Telling Canada the flight was leaving at a later time just left him in Buffalo. Again, that would say that would be admitting he was wrong in selecting him as his OC. So he didn't consider just like faking the flight. No, false. Talk would you? First false. Yes. Okay. I right. wouldn't even brought him back. No, but I mean, would you have used that tactic? I would have said no. No, I wouldn't have. I would have used a different tactic. I would have said, Matt, we're on this plane and what took him to Toronto. Just get him out of the country. <laughs> that's that's what I would have done. I would have said, oh, no, you know what? I'll meet you on the plane. And took him to Canada. You camp. got your passport, right, Matt? Good. Yeah, All right. right see yeah, you. you go, bud, off the way. That's what I would have done. <laughs> okay, true or false, George Pickens is playing NFL Blitz in real life. Did you wow. see the clip of him? Yes. On your Twitter? Yeah, I mean, someone else. I think I quote tweeted it. My God. He's a different He's a different type of player. He, he's going to be very special. And, and uh, Roma was all about that. Roma, for that matter, talking about Roma for a second, he was all over Pickens and Pickett. Yeah, he loves him. He loves him. And there was a certain, when he said, um, Pickett did enough for me today to know that he's going to be a great player, that made me feel good inside. It did. That was like the only positive thing that came out of it. If Romo sees the field very well, and Romo understands the game, and he understands the nuances and all that stuff that we don't get and we don't, we never played NFL quarterback, so we'll never understand that. But the way he said it and the way he was like, I really like this. Kid's going to be special. He sees it. He has, he has this and that. Stuff that I wouldn't even think about. That made me feel a little bit better. A little bit. Me too. Um, back to Pickens for a second, though. That contested catch where he left it up with, in the with, air. With the two hands. Yeah. Really tough. Yeah. And the one that they didn't challenge was a catch, too, as well. Yeah. He was in. He played really strong. And it's the same thing we saw in the second half of the last game. Like, something just switched as soon as Mitch was out. And I think that him and Pickett have a nice repertoire together because of the fact when Pickett was working with the twos and that stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so I, I think that could be – could that be a um, – I'm not, I'm not going to say um, Steve Young, Jerry Rice, but could that be a Big Ben A-B situation? Or something close it to would, that. It would, ha- it would be close to like a Big Ben Plex, right? Like he's more of a Plex guy. But I mean, in, in, in the sense of that's my guy when I need something. Like when Ben needed a third down, 
or Ben need a big play, he goes AB. Do you think? Yeah, it doesn't matter think, if he's covered or and, not. And, and they're both rookies. So do you think in two years, maybe, that be, might be the same situation? Sure. And I can live in that world. No, I, I, I mean, Romo said this during the game, too, that, like, he would have been a first-round pick. That's what 100%. we all keep hearing. So why not? Like, he could be a one. I think he is our one. All right. Well, speaking of that. Bum, bum. What a transition. True or false? Deontay Johnson was the most disappointing player in the entire field. I can't figure him out, man. I can't figure him out. You think he's in his own head? Is he good? He's good. He's good, but he'll he's, drop the easy ones. That's what I mean. But then you're not good then. He had a couple plays that were just like right through your hands or you couldn't get the toe tap. Like he's in his own head. I get that. So like if you're a great pitcher and you throw hard and you have great stuff, but you can't throw for a strike, are you a great pitcher? If you're doing wide receiver tiers, he's not on the top tier. No, he's not. And that's why he didn't get top tier money. He has great route running. Okay. He can make a crazy catch that no one else could make, but he can't catch the ball that's right in his hands. He had three drops yesterday. That's got to be mental. But he had it before, though. Like, is it still in his head? Like, I just don't get it at this point. He, you have to be better. I don't know if anyone can make sense of it. Like, I would much rather. Like, you know what I really liked yesterday? Can't believe I'm saying the word really like. Um, but I really like the fact that with Claypool in the slot. I like those little, like, five-yard hitches, you know, out routes. Claypool would catch it, put his head down, and get another five yards. I like that. I, I'm more comfortable with – I can only have two out uh, – here you go. Here we, here we go. If you could pick two out of three of the receivers on the team right now to stay for the next five years with Kenny Pickett, who are your two? I already know my two. Okay, I'm taking – I'm still taking Deontay, and I want Pickens. Wow, I'm taking Claypool and Pickens. Really? Yeah. Because I think I have, I think I have a little Deontay coming off IR. I think Calvin Austin's going to be special. I thought he was supposed to play. Well, he's technically off IR, but he has a twenty-one day window. Okay. To be yeah, I was surprised. I was like, because when Pierre was back there, I was like, can we just get like Calvin Austin to do right. this? And he yeah, has right. not. Um, all right, that's an interesting take. I I can't believe you're saying Claypool. Everyone was so down on him like one week ago. Um, Sometimes I'm higher level, Frank. Doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes. This goes back to Colbert's drafting history. Is Najee Harris the best running back in the Steelers? The current Najee Harris. I think he's injured. And it's not so much of a thought. He did have a Liz Frank. He did. And that's not it does, that doesn't go away in a week. It could be lingering. Najee Harris is not the best running back on this team. All right. Well, you've got to relax a little bit. Warren was running against the backups. I don't care. He ran... Hold on. I'm looking this one up. This is important. Time out. This is important. This is important stat line right here. He looks really good. Najee Harris had 11 carries for 20 yards. Jalen Warren had five carries for 24. Jalen Warren also had four catches for 39 yards. And Harris had three for 16. Those were in the, those were in garbage time. Yeah, but it's the way he's doing it, Frank. It's the way he's getting the ball. He's hitting the. It's the way he looks powerful, and he's decisive. I think that's important here. He's decisively finding the hole and running. See, that's what uh, that's what the thing is with Najee. That's why you can tell he's injured. He's running like Lev Bell, and like only like I've never seen another running no, back never. Can, never. Only Lev could do that. I've never seen anyone like that in my life. That was the the patience wild. with Lev Bell was like I've, that's like Kareem Skyhook. Like it's I've, no one else has been able to do it. So, it has happened before or after. That's what kind of that's not just he's like kind of just like hesitating in the backfield. Like he's not pushing through that hole like we saw last year. That makes me think he's injured. Are, are you saying okay, 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 okay? He's hurt. Okay. Then if that's the case, then why not at least split the work 50-50 then? I don't, I don't know. It would make sense. It makes sense, right? Yeah. That's what I mean. I don't think he's the best player or the best running back on this team right now. I'm I'm gonna leave. Right him now, I would agree with you, but I just think he's hurt. Maybe he is, but that's that's not an excuse in the NFL. Everyone has bumps and bruises. Oh, I would say. I mean, it's not an excuse. I would be like, dude, then just sit, just sit. Then if what's the difference now? What's the difference now? Your season, you have three weeks till the bye. Three games till the bye week. Three. You could be one in seven and your season's done, or you can win two out of these next three games. And 
that puts you at what? Three and five. And you'd have a legitimate shot because the division's not any good. Why don't you do what do okay? Hey, TJ, we'll see you after the bye. Najee, we'll see you after the bye. This is it. It's a do or break. It's a make or break three games for these guys right now. Yeah, if you're hurt, sit right. out. Sit out. And if and if God bless us, we get to three and five from the bye week and we get everyone back healthy, then let's see if we can make a run here. Let's see if we can put five get five wins in a row. Now, I'm not saying that we should like it. L- let me l- let me clarify that. If you think that you are going to be worse than your backup, then sit. And I think that's probably Najee right now. Mm-hmm. Don't think that's the same thing for Minka. No, no, no. I think Minka's healthy enough that he can go out there and play. If Minka had one leg, he's better than the guy from the upper Yeah, yeah. One no, leg. I think he's got to keep playing. But look, this this is a nice transition too. Because you're going to hear a lot of Steeler fans give that stat. You know, they have the worst record in the league right now. Right now we'd have the first pick in the NFL draft. That's a hard thing to say. And... I'm telling you, diehard Steeler fans who want the best for us are going to say, well, we should just lose every game now. Well, the Steelers should just tank and try to get the number one overall pick. True or false? Steelers should do that. False. Completely false. There's no su- First of all, there's two, two things. There's no such thing as tanking in the NFL. Agreed. The NBA, you could kind of tank, right? I've never seen it work in the NBA. There's, it's never worked once. Did, you can, you can, you can try. A team has never tanked and won the, the finals. Pe- Penguins have done it pretty well. Twice. I was gonna say twice in, in hockey. Twice it's, <laughs> in hockey, it's worked. In baseball, it's worked. Unless the, you're the, the Pirates and you just can't draft. Well, them. you have to tank properly. The Astros are really smart about it. They, White Sox. Yeah. Okay. So it, it it has worked there. It's never worked in the NBA. It's, it's it's never worked in the NFL. It's never worked in the NFL. So, a you can't really do it. And B, this team isn't. You tank with a team that's kind of like the Jaguars, like of a, two three years ago. You stink. But you have young kids, and you're building them up. We don't have that. We have veterans. We're paying people a lot of money. You know, teams that teams that tank are 100 million under the cap. We're not. Like you know, what I mean, it's just this team is better than the record shows. For as much as people talk about like locker room culture, building an organization, all of that is the exact opposite of tanking. You have to be focused on winning. I don't care if the Steelers go. Uh, you know, maybe we're right in the middle and we finish with like six or seven wins. Fine. So we're going to get like the 15th pick. Whatever. It's not that much different than the eighth pick. Right. It's and, not that much different from the first pick. And a lot of people bitch about that. A lot of people say, well, we're just end up with the middle of the – it doesn't matter. You still have to You still have to make the correct pick. There's awesome players in the NFL all the way through the second round. Oh, yeah. Heisman, second rounder. Absolutely. There's a lot of – a lot of – a lot of – Talented one, like I said, one through three, you can get that. I'm telling you, that is the coldest take that Steeler fans are going to make. There are people out here that are saying, "Oh, well, I, I'm just rooting for us to lose because I want the best for us." Turn your turn your TV off. Yeah, yeah cancel no, no, your no, cable. No, I don't need you. And and I feel like Frank, I feel like I'm gonna be saying that a lot in these next couple. If uh, you want the, us to lose, the turn Steelers your TV stink. off. I want them to lose. I'm not gonna watch. Please go. I don't need you on this team. I don't need you to be in in Steeler. I don't need you. Go away. This is the ebbs and flows of the league. This is the ebbs and flows of a team. When you have passion about a team and you really care about a team, you're going to win you're going to lose. The true fans, what makes winning so great is when you go through all the trials and tribulations and you win in the end. That's when you win that Super Bowl after a season like this, that's where it's all about. That's, you got to live with the team, man. That, that's why the, these, these fans in Europe, when they win, it's so great because they live with their trials and tribulations. Well, they also don't have a draft and they get relegated. Well, I lose. understand that, but, but these people in America, they want some yeah. instant gratification. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. No, it, it, it's a negative, it's a poison when you, when you play to lose. You cannot do that. And in the NFL, it's so physical, you can't really play to lose. Yeah, how are you going to do that? You'll, you'll, you'll get you, hurt. You have to sit your guys, I guess. I yeah, don't know you how you do, do it. it. You have to trade your guys, maybe. But the Dolphins tried it. They couldn't even do it. They no. ended up being good. Yeah, right. The Giants were – I I have, a, I have a buddy in New York, and he's a big Giants fan. And he already told me, he goes, look, we're trying to lose. They're 4-1. and It's just tough to do. It doesn't work in the NFL. It's, it's insidious. So, all right, quick before we go. Yeah. Bucks next week. Yeah. Big juice tailgate. Big We're time. throwing a party, Lou. No. Yeah. Say it ain't so. Yeah, it's okay. happening. I might have to make it a 10. I mean. 
Hey, we're getting down there early. You can. You, okay. I know you got to watch the game in your same place. You can well, go yeah. home. Well, yeah. Well, see, I'm. I'm. See, here's the thing. The Steelers are so bad right now. I'm getting out of Pittsburgh. I'm catching a flight here in like three hours to get down to Florida for my buddy's wedding. So I'm getting out of here, but I'm flying back Saturday night. Your college buddies? Yeah. So yeah, one of my buddies, one of my good friends from college, we went to college in a Flagler, in St. Augustine, Florida, and he's getting married down in Jupiter. So we're heading down there. You, know. you were you were the original one and done, by the way. Yeah, no, yeah. Everyone talks about I was the original one done. I did four months. I was there for four months. And I said, <laughs> ah, that's enough. A quarter and done? Yeah, I said, you know what? I, everyone asked me. <laughs> that's a funny part. Everyone says, uh, oh, how, how, how'd you enjoy college? I said, I'm like Jordan. You know, I retired early. I did, <laughs> I did four months. I said, I'm good. I came back. Yeah, all right. So you won't be here. I won't be here this week. No, I will be in Disney World tomorrow. And then in Jupiter wow. for the wedding Friday. Then I'm back Saturday night. So wow. I got we, we, we might need to do a uh, vlog. But anyway, okay. big juice party. I'm yeah, inviting everyone wait. to come down there and join us. We'll be probably. What time, what time the lot's open? Man, we're, we're getting down there at like 8, 9 a.m. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. we'll have a bunch of food. We'll have drinks. We'll have merch. Uh, it's going to be a party. Well, I guess I have Cameras, to be there now. Cameras, content. Huh? I, I guess I have to be there. I'm the local. The Yins are celebrating now. So you, I guess, yeah. I, I mean, guess I got to make it appear. Sign, bring your Sharpie. They're going to say, where's that Lou guy from the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a wrap. All right, buddy.